Welcome back to Good Evening KU. I'm Taylor Thomas. And I'm Al Moore. Um, and also, huge shout out to Kaki, who is actually was supposed to be sitting here today, but she decided to go to the Justin Bieber concert instead. I know. That's pretty lucky. I know. So lucky for her. I'd rather be doing that right now. But um, also, the last time that we were hosting together was your first week at KU. I know. That feels like forever. I know. Now. So, so long ago. So, do you feel like there's anything, like any improvements do you feel more comfortable here yeah definitely like <laughs> overall like KU has felt so much like home yeah um, good for one you know when I we first were talking mm -hmm. the bus system right. couldn't even understand that got yes. at the union you know walked a mile to classes but now you know I like figured that out yeah. okay. <laughs> so I feel like a pro here good and I made so many like new friends oh, and like fun. continue to make friends so yeah like always walking to class so, like run into someone I see yeah that's so, so know, exciting like home right and so now the semester is wrapping up I think we have like four more weeks left as that yeah, it really and it, I know it's flown by so fast do you feel like stressed with anything like coming up with finals type I stuff mean, I mean you know finals always get me like in right the jitters, but right I am actually in a theater class <laughs> that's exciting <laughs> I know it's exciting too. <laughs> I mean every day is just a new beginning you gotta get up on that stage and act how you feel and yeah it's kind of uncomfortable yeah but um our final is like a final performance okay it's not like a paper or anything because right of course not class, it's theater it's yeah, theater class I thought it was a history of theater class Class, yeah. No, you have to like act yeah. and become like different people every yeah. Tuesday and Thursday morning. <laughs> and um, so we have to give a final performance. So I just Fun. don't know how that'll go over. Yeah. Because I'm not really gifted in theater. Yeah. It's not my major. So I'm just kind of in it for scared. the in it for the ride. Yeah, in it for the elective KU course. <laughs> <laughs> that will so, be exciting. Yeah, are you worried about any of your finals? Um, well, luckily this semester I don't have any finals on actual finals week. Oh, wow. I just have projects and papers due the week before, which will be Stressful right now, but so worth it during finals week when everyone's stressing out and I'm able to go back home. So I'll be super, super pumped for that. So you're going to leave during finals week then? Yes. Yeah, so like theoretically, I could leave stop day, but I'm just going to probably hang out for a couple more days because everyone will still be here. Um, and then it's really fortunate because my internship over the summer starts the like Monday after finals week. So I'll be able to go home and have a few days to unpack yeah. and say hi to everyone before I actually have to... Wow. start working and doing stuff again you which will be exciting so i know i know i'm very my last final is on thursday at 7 30 oh my morning, gosh so i gotta stay the whole, the whole time, time. <laughs> yeah do you have finals before that or um, just i'm not really sure yet they haven't okay. posted the dates but yeah definitely that theater final yeah. is before then <laughs> that's so exciting well also um royals season yep. baseball season my shirt, shirt that i'm wearing today is back in action and they had their three game series over these past few days um, with the Mets and tonight is their last game so they're one to one right now so That's it's tied up yeah. hopefully we win again tonight that would be so exciting to watch. Are you a big Royals fan or baseball fan? Um, I would say I'm generally a sports fan I just think that just it's overall yeah I, yeah I think it's like fun like sports are just fun to watch I'm not necessarily like specifically details and the nitty-gritty of who's who and what games they've won and verse blah, blah, all that stuff. But I think like the spirit behind it and like how it um, puts everyone together is so fun. Also, the, the picture that is shown right now is the um, World Championship 2015 World Series um, ring that the Royals won. And that has the, a lot of jewels on there. Oh, yes. Man, they, like. got, they got them today, actually, which is super exciting. That's, yeah, there's a Those lot are, of <laughs> a lot I don't of, know lot if of I'd like that on, on my finger. I wouldn't mind. I, <laughs> I wouldn't mind. <laughs> One day, if I, well, hopefully I'll get married, maybe my engagement ring will be that thick. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. I'm not a big, like, ring fan, so yeah. that would be really uncomfortable. I'm more yeah. into, like, friendship bracelets. Yeah. Let's take it back old school. <laughs> so Maybe you'll get an engagement bracelet instead of a ring. Yeah, everyone, everyone would be one. confused about that. <laughs> they wouldn't know what Did to do. Did you go to camp or get married? Yeah. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> that is so fun. So, you are originally from Kansas, right? And then you moved back? From Missouri. From Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. So, do you think you're going to look into any more Royals games? Yeah, I actually... I I mean, um, me and my family went to Royals game when, when I was like in elementary school, Aww. so I mean, but I don't really remember it, and I'm not that yeah. big of a baseball fan, yeah. but I hope since I'm staying in Lawrence um, right. this summer to go to some That's of the Royals games. such a fun activity to do, too, just get out there when it's such nice weather and stuff yeah. like that. 
Um, speaking of things that you're going to do, it sounded like you had a very exciting weekend this past weekend. I did. So the guy I met on Tinder and flew to go see on spring break, <laughs> yes. his name's Luke. And anyway, he came to visit me this uh -huh. last weekend. Um, and so I showed him around KU campus, Fun. you know, and That's we, so it was so funny because he's from a small college and right. we were walking around like where we, I normally like go to classes and everything. Right. And right. then we had to walk all the way back to my dorm and he was just like dragging behind and he's like, are we almost there yet? Like, are oh we halfway gosh. there? And I'm That's like, crazy. not even close. Right, right. <laughs> like, it's this like, is the daily life of a Jayhawk. <laughs> I know, but the nice thing is that you get your exercise walking yeah. in class. I never feel like I have to work out after walking the class. I'm like, this is literally on my Fitbit 12,000 steps yep. already. So and I mean, crazy. we're going up hills, so it's like yeah. our legs are definitely toned. <laughs> I feel like this campus Absolutely. has the greatest legs. <laughs> I would agree with that. So do you guys have any plans for the future? Um, yeah, later in April, I'm actually uh -huh. going to go fly out there and visit him. Fun. And this is pretty bizarre, but on Pinterest, you know, you find some crazy yes. things like yes. crafting or like tulip farms. Right. Oh, and tulip <laughs> farms. <laughs> yeah, so I found a picture of a tulip farm, as uh -huh. you can see, like pictured. Look how yeah. Pretty, that, that is looks. so pretty. That'll be fun and to visit. And it's an hour away from where he lives in Texas, uh -huh. so we're gonna drive to a tulip farm and just frolic that in the flowers. That is so so fun. <laughs> that sounds so exciting. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Do you well, have any exciting plans, like um, weekend plans coming up? Well, this not this weekend, but um, next weekend is my sorority's biggest spring formal, and then oh. the weekend after that is mom's weekend. So I'm super looking forward. To, that's in three weeks, though. Yeah. So that'll, that'll be, be fun. Yes, I'm so excited to finally see my mom again. It's Well, Easter is not that far. It wasn't that far away, but it'll yeah. be very exciting to see her. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all we have for today. Up next will be Rose with an interview um, from the agency. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back to Good Evening KU. I'm Rose McHale, and today we're talking to Jaden, who is usually a regular here on Good Morning and Good Evening KU, but she's here to tell us a little bit about the agency. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so the agency, it's just in its second year, and it's a student-run advertising agency. Um, last year, I wasn't part of the founding of it, but there were about six students I got together, and Janet Rose, who's the advisor, they got with her and decided that they wanted real experience uh, besides mm -hmm. internships that they could actually do while they're at school and work with real clients. So that got started, and now this year we're kind of up and running, and we're still tweaking some things, but yeah, we have it going. We have clients that we work with now. So there's only six students, so how many students are involved in it? That them? was just the number that started it. Okay. Now we have over 40 that are oh, wow. okay. involved in it one way like or another. Sounds like I've heard of a lot of people yeah. being involved in it. Yeah, there's six different departments that students okay. can be in, and so there's a lot of different opportunities there. Okay, so what department are you in, or like what's your position, or what do you do? So I am mainly on the account team, which is like the liaison kind of between the client and the agency. Okay. I also work a little bit with production. The nice thing about, mm -hmm. since it's still a learning opportunity, um, you can be involved with multiple departments or if you only, if you start out in one and don't like it, you can switch okay. pretty easily. Is it mostly just your atcom students then? There are, there's also some, one of, actually our creative director is a political science major okay, and he well. just decided he was interested in it. So it doesn't have to be journalism school, um, students only. That's really cool that it just brings people together from like all over different departments yeah. at KU. So yeah. How do students get involved in then? So this year it's kind of late to get involved, but to get involved next fall you would just come to the agency which is in uh, 201 in Software okay. Flint or you can email Janet Rose. Um, they are having like an agency prerequisite class starting okay. next year. So well, that, it's it must be growing a lot to yeah. and um, you would take that class and then work with the agency, and then you could jump in fully after. Okay. Yep. That's very cool. So, um, what kind of opportunities do students have then, like through the agency, or like how do you think the agency will help students in the future for jobs and 
stuff like that. I know. Or internships too. Um, I guess. One thing that's been really nice for me is interacting with actual clients because a lot of times you do these projects in a class and it's like a hypothetical client and so you mm -hmm. don't actually communicate with anyone on that end and that's something that obviously in the real world you will be doing. So just mm -hmm. um, practicing being professional and emailing and you know sometimes you produce something and the client doesn't like it so you have to go back and review and just learning that whole process has been really helpful. Well, I had no idea this was an opportunity at KU, so that's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there anything else you'd want to add? I think we covered it. Just if students are interested, I would definitely encourage you to get involved because like I said, there's social media strategy. You don't just have to be like a creative artsy person to be in the agency. Well, thank you for joining us, Jaden. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Yeah, so next we'll have the news. Hi, I'm Leah and I'm here with Lamont and Julia. We are with Delta Epsilon Mu, a pre-health fraternity here on campus, and we are here to talk about our car show that's coming up. All right, so our car show uh, goes by the name of Tuner Fest. It's going to occur on April the 10th from 11 to 5. Uh, admission is completely free to the public, and also if you want to enter in your car, it's $10 with a KUID and it's $20 without, and that price allows you to uh, enter in for contests and prizes and games and such. And 40% of the proceeds for this event are going to be going to Children's Lives Include Moments of Bravery, which is a program run through Lawrence Memorial Hospital. Basically, the main premise of the program is to help children whose parents are going through cancer better understand the disease, the disease itself and the treatment. All right, well, we hope to see you guys all there at Tuner Fest on Sunday, April 10th, anytime between 11 and 5 p.m. to come support your community in Delta Epsilon Mu. Thank you. Welcome back, I'm Chloe Cudney. And I'm Julia Nordum. This is your Good Evening KU News Update. The KU Medical Center will open a new MS Achievement Center later this month to support the thousands of people in Kansas City who suffer from multiple sclerosis. The center will be one of eight in the country to provide integrated services for those with MS. The KU debate team placed second at the national championship in New York this past weekend. With a field of 78 schools competing, the team of Sion Bell and Quorum Robinson reached the finals of the 70, 70th National Debate Tournament before losing to Harvard. KU will host next year's national tournament to be held March 23rd through the 27th. Two more KU students made big headlines this week, earning prestigious Barry M. Goldwater scholarships. Juniors Annie Lynn and Kevin Tenney are working on research problems related to fighting viruses and creating more efficient electricity systems. The scholarship provides up to $7,500 annually. The big event will be held on Saturday, April 16th. Check-in will be at 9 a.m. and the official kickoff will be at 9.30. Crews will head out at 10 o'clock and complete various projects at hundreds of locations around Lawrence. The big event is KU's largest single day of community service in town. KU faculty and staff are invited to attend a workshop on community engagement and international education next Tuesday. The Center for Civic and Social Responsibility and the Office of Study Abroad are co-sponsoring the event, which will be held from 3 to 5 p.m. in the Jayhawk Room of the Kansas Union. KU Athletics has a busy week ahead with softball and baseball games at home, and as well as the spring football game on Saturday. The softball team hosts North Texas and Georgia Tech Friday through Sunday, while the baseball team will play TCU in a three-game series. The kickoff for the football game is 1 p.m. And that will wrap it up for today's news update. Please keep watching, and after the break, we'll be back with Bella Without Borders. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas. A great place to be you.
Welcome back to Bell Without Borders. War crime is an individual that can be held responsible for the actions of a country or that nation's soldiers. Genocide, crimes against humanity, mistreatment of civilians or combatants during war and can all fall under the category of war crimes. The United States' relation to Pakistan has been severely damaged in recent years for many reasons, including drone strikes. We've spent plenty of time in recent years in Pakistan with valid reasons. The United States Navy SEALs underwent an intense and risky attack to get the compound where Osama bin Laden resided. But that was the point, to go into Pakistan just for him. Recently, we've been in Pakistan causing more harm than good. Drones are meant to kill one person or one group of terrorists, and they don't always succeed in that. Drones have killed innocent civilians. The Middle East is a slow developing region and even in modern day have had many troubles. Implementing these drone strikes rather than putting men on the ground further destroys the Pakistani social and economic structure and causes psychological issues and fear as civilians wait for drones to strike. These attacks kill innocent civilians including elementary students and pro-government peace negotiators. Invading a country and killing innocent lives only cause more anger and hatred for them towards the United States. It is inevitable that people get angry and find war to be unfair, especially when it involves your own family and friends. This anger and heartache only adds tension and often results in new insurgent attacks. The United States must also remember that not every person living in Pakistan is an enemy or is harmful. There are many civilians in Pakistan that are pro-American and think of their soldiers as the greater menace. The New Yorker interviewed a teen student in Islamabad and he said, We are between two extremes. We face regular forces and we also face irregular forces with long hair, beards, and their codes of conduct. It was very difficult to resist them. They imposed their own brand of Islam. If you did not cooperate, you were kidnapped or you were beheaded. There is a strong and continuous pressure between peers and there is tribal pressure as well. In 2009, Leon Panetta, former director of CIA and secretary of defense under Obama, who oversaw over 50 lethal drone attacks, said, American policy was to avoid a civilian casualties whenever possible. War isn't just about the present or the current situation. It is to discover a solution for the future. War also isn't about a single country. It invo involves and affects our whole country, our whole world. War cannot be a selfish act. We need to be fighting for a brighter and safer future, whether it is for the United States or for Pakistan. That will wrap up the segment of Bell Without Borders. Up next, we'll have the weather. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome back. Well, we have my partner in crime, Bentley, outside. Bentley, what is the weather looking like? Hey, Warren, it's actually beautiful outside right now. It's high 60s and what you can see behind me is what would be Daisy Hill, but finally, you know, spring is starting to sprung and the, tr the trees are starting to bloom. It's getting green outside again and the sun feels good. So luckily, Kansas is finally starting to get the memo that it's springtime, but hopefully it stays consistent excuse me, throughout the week. So I'll send it back to you in the news station and let us hear a weekend update on the news. Perfect. Thank you, Bentley. Well, as we go into tonight, uh, winds are going to stay around kind of early. Uh, the winds will die off as we go through the night. Uh, we are expecting a low of about 45 degrees tonight. And as we look into tomorrow, temperatures will warm up to about 68 degrees. Uh, but unfortunately, that wind is going to stick around tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be windy about 25 gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. As we look into the five day, uh, as you can see here, like I said, tomorrow it's going to be 68 degrees and uh, Friday uh, clear 65. But as we go into the weekend, we are going to introduce uh, some clouds and Sunday, look at this Sunday, 78 degrees. It's going to be awesome. We're hoping that stays true these next few days. 
but unfortunately, as we go into the middle or the beginning of the work week next week, we're looking at a uh, high of 55 degrees, and we are introducing a chance of rain. That is all we have for you today on this week's edition of Good Evening KU. Make sure you follow us on, on, follow us <laughs> on Twitter at Media Crossroads. See you guys next week.